to welcome everyone who's on the call with us. We're going to start, uh, as always, with questions here in the room. Uh, questions for Coach Kelly, please raise your hand. We'll get the mic to you. And we're just going to start with Rick Morgan. Stanford do anything different with the change of quarterback? They still run pretty much the same thing that David's run down there uh, with, uh, with Nunez. They're a little different. Matt, Ho I mean, um, Kevin Hogan's a little bit more, uh, probably a little bit better runner than Josh was, so there's a little bit more quarterback on the perimeter stuff. But, you know, their system is their system. Rob Mosley in the front. They, they've always got a big defensive front. Could you talk about how you feel like you match up there? And what, what did you think of your offensive line? USC, they seem like they had such a good game. You didn't have quite as much success running the ball against Cal. How, how did you judge those two performances back to back? I had two different teams, two different schemes. You know, obviously, um, they do have a good front. You know, they've got some kids that we played a lot of football against, Harry Anderson and um, Gardner and, and Stevens, and then Murphy and Chase Thomas on the edge, Shane Scove in the middle. Guys have been around for a long time. Um, really good knowledge and understanding of their scheme, um, and, and they play hard. So um, in terms of our, our performances, we're about the end result. So I, I don't care if we run it. I don't care if we throw it. You know, if you're going to let us throw for 377 and six touchdowns, we'll take that every week. So. Did we protect? Yeah. Gary? Yeah, Chip, could you talk about you got seats, Gary. <laughs> Taylor a little bit if you could? Uh, Stephon Stanford Taylor or Taylor Hart? Stephon. Um, for some reason, and I don't know why, an underrated running back, I don't think he gets enough publicity or enough notoriety for what he's done. He's going to go down as one of the all-time great running backs in Stanford history. Um, physical runner, got great vision. Uh, it just seems like in every game, at some point in time, he's going to pop a run and all of a sudden come out of something and you know rips off a huge 20-plus run. Um, he's got a good... Really, really, really good vision. He's strong. He breaks a lot of tackles. Um, I think he's on par to go for his third time over 1,000 yards. So uh, really um, challenge for us in terms of tackling him and making sure he gets down because of how hard he runs. Dirk. Sure. Talked a little bit about Stanford's front seven. Number one in the nation against the run and number one in the nation with sacks. How do those two complement each other, do they? Uh, well, they're good against the run and they're good against the pass when I look at that. So, you know, I think it's a huge challenge for us offensively um, getting matched up against what will be the best defense we face so far. So, um, you know, a lot of veteran players on that side of the ball that, that play really hard, you know. So, you know, I, I like watching them on film. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun to watch, you know. So it'll be um, – I hope they're not as productive on Saturday. But um, How do they get after the – pass or what do they do that, that they're so successful you got great athletes great skill and in a good scheme so that you know they free up a lot of guys they get guys into a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations against people and they beat the guys they're in against one -on in one-on-one -on -one situations they, they, they usually get the upper hand in that stuff a lot's been made about Stanford the last couple of years facing you guys and your speed against them uh, offensively do you see anything in their defense that that shows you that they've they've worked to counter the speed of a spread offense like yours? I, I don't look at it that way. I look at them being the number one rush defense in the in the country and number one in sacks in the country. So I would say they're doing a pretty good job on the defensive side of the ball. Well, they, they're, they're running sideline to sideline. You don't give up 50 yards a game rushing if you're not running sideline to sideline. So, Aaron. Coach, has uh, DeAnthony been playing defensive back in practice? And How's he look? We don't really talk about how we do practice. If we did, we'd invite you guys in every day. So just like injuries, we just don't talk about that. So Next appreciate question. you asking. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Um, a lot's been made about you guys using a lot of depth and had some injuries, et cetera, et cetera. But it almost seems like you got I mean, one, you guys don't talk about injuries. But two, you guys get so many reps in, especially in the fall and in the practice. You're developing two, three, four deep. Does that give you guys an advantage in terms of weathering those types of storms because you've got guys you can rely on? We think it does. We think our style of practice allows us to, to get guys more reps. I think in a lot of other programs, when you don't get as many reps as we do in practice, um, you always hear about, well, the ones got a lot of reps, but our twos didn't get a lot. You know, we, we think with how we've structured practice and what we're trying to do from an efficiency standpoint that, that we can maximize um, guys getting quality reps in practice. And, and we hope um, if we get put in situations where guys have to play, that we've gotten them enough snaps in a practice situation where they can play. And, and I think the other byproduct is that we've been in games this year. We've, we've been fortunate that we could, you know, kind of play down our depth chart a little bit because of having a leads at certain points in time. So 
you know, some of the guys are getting opportunities to play in games right now. This isn't their first time. It's not going to be game 11. Oh, my God, this guy has to get in a game and he's never been in a game. Um, everybody, I think, in a couple of our games, everybody that's got eligibility and is not getting redshirt had opportunities to get in games. So you hope that that depth is, is going to be a benefit to us. And that's one of the things we've always tried to work for here is to really work on our depth on, on both sides of the ball. Kind of following up on that, uh, last week Cal was pretty banged up. You guys are pretty banged up now. Is, is the 85 scholarship limit something that maybe ought to be taking a look at and also maybe the 65 travel roster be maybe something that could be expanded? The travel roster is at 70. And it's not, and I don't think the scholarship thing has anything to do with it. Everybody deals with the same thing. As long as the rules are even for everybody, I, I don't think anybody, no one, no one has got an advantage or a disadvantage. That's just how it is, so. Deshaun, we're going to the phones. Are there any questions uh, waiting on the phones for Coach Kelly? Please press star one on your telephone keypad if you have a question. There are no questions at this time. Okay. Coming back here, Rob. How long playing another game at guard? Did, did he take a significant jump here? A lot of like, teams getting a lot better from game one to game two, things like that. Did he take a big jump game one to game two in terms of just his comfort level at that position? Uh, I don't look at it like that. I mean, playing guard and playing tackle is really kind of the same. It's either you have a guy on your head or don't have a guy on your head. I, I don't think it's – I mean, if someone went, you know, from wide receiver to quarterback, I think that would be a different situation. But going from tackle to guard and the way Wood rotates everybody up front, I don't think um, – you know, Nick Cody's done a lot. Mark Asper started one year at tackle for us, next year at guard for us. You know, C.E. Kaiser did the same thing. Um, the only position I think that's a little bit more unique in our system is our center. But our guards and tackles are pretty much um, interchangeable, I think. You know, obviously, trying to get Kyle comfortable at one position was a little bit easier for us. But I think he, he grasped it really well and played well uh, these last two weeks. Warren? Oh. That's our microphone. Chip, um, I asked Marcus earlier if he's seen the, the game better. His pass efficiency is up. He's really throwing the ball well. He says the game slowed down quite a bit. Um, are you seeing that with him? And and do you encourage him to, to maybe run maybe a bit more with this big defensive front, or is that, is that strictly up to him? Second question, no. I mean, just take what the defense gives you is obviously always what we've always told our guys. And, and, and the game has seemed like it slowed down for him, which is what you'd expect. You know, he's, he's got 10 full games underneath his belt now um, where he's had an opportunity to go out there and experience a lot of different things um, on the field. So he's a real sharp kid. He's a real quick learner. Um, so the more experience he gets, the better he's going to be. But we haven't said anything about, you know, run here. You, you got to really, um, I think when you're trying to tell him to do something, that's, that's, I think you're screwing him up. I think he's, he's in 10 games so far, he's made some pretty good decisions. And I'm sure he, hopefully we'll be continuing to do the same thing this week. After I got the microphone, I realized this is another inside practice question you may not answer, but I'll try anyway. Okay. Um, in the fall, you've talked about how you guys don't really instruct much during practice. It's rep, 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 and watch film. Does that change during the season because you're game planning more, or is it still rep, rep, rep? Now, well, the rep part doesn't change, but we do instruct. It's just who are you instructing? So, you know, I, I can't talk to a kid who's getting reps, but we all coach the guys that aren't in, you know. So if you watch how we practice, the, the quarterbacks around Coach Elf and the, the rest of the old lines behind Wood. So you, your opportunity to coach is to, to, to point out things to the guys that aren't in. So there, there's a lot of coaching that's going on during practice. It's just – we're not going to stop practice like you see at other places and instruct one player, and then there's 21 guys standing around. You know, we want to get as many reps, and um, if, if we don't get an opportunity to correct a guy on that thing, it's, you know, and, and sometimes when you want to talk to a kid, the, the, all we do as coaching staff is sub for him. Hey, I need to get him, so go get him so they can run a play. Come here, hey, let me explain what's going on here because we're going to get it in two more plays. We're going to run that play again. We want to make sure we get that right. So um, there's still a lot of instruction going on in practice, but just not for the guys that are actually getting the reps. So. Question. Oh, Gary, I can't see you. There. All right, here we go. N not that this factors into the game, of course. Game day has been here many times before. You've had some fun with it. Is it still just, just about the fan thing, or do you like it? Is it, is it something good for the university that it, that it is here again? No, I, I think it's good for the university. I think it's good for the fans. I, I, I think it's a positive for, for everybody involved in this. You know, it's just I, I think people don't realize that you know none of our players are any of Anybody else is ever involved because they're all at the hotel and in meetings and things like that. So um, we watch a little bit of it, but I, you know, sometimes we'll we'll have a we'll have something so they they catch part of it, but they don't catch the whole thing. So, but I, I again, I think it's great for the university. I think it's great for our fans. Rob, 
they have so much, Stanford has so much talent at tight end, and, and they throw those guys a ton, throw their backs a ton. I don't know if it's a lot more than most people do, but it seems like they split their tight ends out a lot to maybe create some tough matchups. Can you address just the way they deploy those guys in the passing game and, and the challenge that might present? Yeah, you know, Ertz is kind of a unique prospect in terms of he has the athletic ability to line up as a receiver, but he's also physical enough to play um, on the line of scrimmage, you know, and I think that's, they're just trying to, and Dave has always done a really good job of utilizing their talents. They did the same thing with Foligno a year ago. Um, and then when you add Toy Lolo in there, you know, they've got, they, they're just playing to their strengths. And I think um, Mark of a good coach, you know, he, he's got some talent at tight end. He's got some talent at, at running back, and they're just featuring that. Sure. I know you guys preach next man in, but when, when a guy like Avery goes down in that game, um, just given the way that he, he really stepped in, especially once Boyette went down, the plays that he made this season, is there, is there a side of you that, that feels for a guy like that? Are you able to, at least after the game, step back and kind of address just you know, what he was able to do for you this season? Yeah, that happens with everybody. You know, when a player gets hurt, I mean, I feel for all those guys. They've given their heart and soul to this program, and that it mean it means everything to them, and they mean everything to us. But our mentality about the next guy in is that you you just can't sit there and feel sorry for him while the game's going on, you know, and say, oh my God, we lost such and such. So, you know, let's let's mourn. You know, I, I feel extremely poor for him. I felt bad for John Boyette. I felt bad for Carson. All those guys. I, I don't think I think that gets overlooked. But if our mentality isn't next man in, then Avery wouldn't played as well as he did when he stepped and was the next man in. So, you know, I think that gets overshadowed a little bit, but we always feel bad when, when someone that has given their heart and soul like those guys have and um, doesn't have an opportunity to go back into the game. That, that That's a tough thing to do. And along the lines of next man in, with, with Dargan now kind of being that guy who's played in a lot of different roles on this defense, how much have his reps all season long kind of prepared him for maybe the, the bigger role that he has to take on now? Eric's been great. Eric's played a lot of football for us, just like Avery had played football before. So we're 100% confident Eric playing football for us. Rick, you don't have a lot of seniors, but you're going to send some out for the last time this Saturday. Can you talk a little bit about what this group has been, has meant to the program? Yeah, I, I, I think senior day is great, and I think it's our fans give recognition for them. But if the end for us is hopefully sometime in January. So we, it's it's kind of a weird time for us. You know, we don't look at this Saturday as – as let's look at the seniors and, and where have they been because we're going to be together with these guys for hopefully a lot longer. So um, I, I think that's a little bit different. But I, we got a, a small group, but I think they've been outstanding. The, the Michael Clays, the Kikos, uh, Nick Cody, you know, a ton of guys that, that understand exactly how this program operates and understand what we stand for and have always done things the right way. So really excited about um, our fans get their last opportunity to see them. But, you know, we still got a lot of football left in us, so it's it's not like we're saying goodbye to them as a coaching staff because we're gonna be with them next week, and then hopefully we'll you know we'll get a, a, a at least a month or so with them in uh, in December as we're getting ready to go play in a bowl game. So, AJ, Coach Stanford looks to be very physical both sides of the football. How do you prepare, or do you prepare any differently the week leading up to a very physical team, or is it more or less the same week of practice? Yeah, we just took boxing gloves out and <laughs> teed off on each other for two hours. It doesn't change. I mean, you just you prepare against the scheme that you're playing against and, um, you know, are they a one-back team, two-back team, two-tight end team, one-tight end team, you know, whatever their their scheme is, we, we you know, we, we prepare for that offensively and defensively, so um, that part changes, but how we practice itself doesn't change. Hold on, Jason. Deshonda, going back to the phones one last time. Are there any questions waiting? Please press star one. If you have a question. There are no questions at this time. Okay, Jason. Clearly, you know, this game, anything could happen in this game. But are you almost expecting Stanford to try to control the ball for about 40 minutes, get a few stops on your offense, and try to win the game that way? 40 minutes? It's, I have no idea. <laughs> They have? They have? Tam possession? Well, then they, I, I would argue that point, but I, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. I mean, we've lost time of possession in maybe almost every game we played. A lot. Two years ago, Thursday night game, we played UCLA. They ran 73 snaps. We ran 71 snaps. They had the ball for 40 minutes. We had the ball for 20 minutes. We won 60 to 13. So we don't look at that stat. That means time of possession means absolutely nothing to this operation. So, 
We were last in the nation last year in time of possession. Okay. I mean, do I expect Stanford to come in here and go no backs and throw the ball every single down against us? No, I think they're going to do what they do, and we're going to do what we do, and we'll see what wins. Any final questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Jay Allen.